Hello and welcome to Steve McDonald's Arts and Crafts and today I'm going to be doing a little diorama within this deep frame that I've purchased. It was really really cheap and don't forget I will put the links to everything I use in this video in the description below so all you have to do is click on them and it will take you straight to it. I'm going to show you how I prepare it first. So this is an easy thing to actually do to stick this to here. All I'm going to do is I've got some wood glue and wood glue is really, really cheap. And I'm just going to quickly go around this, making sure it's all covered because I want as good a seal as possible. Okay, so that's done. And now all I'm going to do is put this base on here and then I'm going to clamp it down. Now, if you haven't got any clamps like this, although these are very cheap as well, I would suggest putting a bit of, just putting a bit of weight on it, a bottle of resin, something like that, and that will be enough weight. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my little fish. And I've got this little fish mould and this little shell mould that I've used several times before. But what I want to do is I want these fish to actually be multicoloured rather than poured in just one colour. And I don't want to do lots and lots of different pours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush my mica powder on them. And if you want to know how to do this, it is a fairly easy technique to do, then check out the video that I will put up and link at the end of this video. And it will take you straight to a tutorial on how to do this. Additionally, I'll be using some sand at the bottom of this one, which I have here. And I've also got hold of these little tiny plastic jellyfish that I think look great. I shall be using these in it as well. These are done now. I've painted the mica powder in it. So that you don't miss out on any future videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it. That will notify you when I release a video. I always release a video twice a week. So I'm going to quickly pour into these so these can be curing. I can get on to the next stage. I'm going to show you how I pour into these because I do it in a different way rather than just pouring straight in so it doesn't over disturb the mica powder that's in there. What I do is, first of all, these little fins need a bit of resin in them. So I take a blunt nose needle. You could use a toothpick. It's absolutely fine. And I push the resin in there first because if not, what happens is air gets trapped inside them and then they don't come out. And then I fill a pipette and then I slowly pour using the pipette into the actual mold. And that way you're not disturbing any of the mica powder that you've got there. I'll just move those off to one side and then we'll get on with the next bit. I want to have a sandy bottom. <laughs> There's no worse than having a sandy bottom. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a hot glue mold. So I've got my little mould made now and I've mixed up my resin. I've poured my sand into a little pot. I'm pouring my resin into the sand. And what I will do is I will give that a mix around to make sure that every bit of that sand is coated. I'll leave that for about five minutes because I often find that a lot of bubbles pop up on the top of the sand. There we go, see what I mean? There's a lot of bubbles that have come up in that so i'm just going to pop those bubbles so there we go there's quite a few more bubbles popped up now what i will do is i will pour the excess resin that's floated to the top off because i don't really want that i'll just take a stick like this and i'll pop my sand into there by pouring the excess off it's actually a lot easier to mold and it's a lot easier to get what you're looking for so I'll move that off to one side. So now this is glued up and it's nice and tight, but I don't want obviously this color in the background. And I also want to make sure it's got an extra seal on there. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. I'm gonna paint this with acrylic paint and I want it a blue color. Then all I'll do is I will go around this and paint this base, making sure I squeeze the acrylic paint in all the edges and all the corners as well. So I'll come back to that once it's had two coats and everything else is dry and we're gonna to start to build this diorama frame up. Well, the sand bit is nicely cured now, so I can take that off the silicon mat, as you can see. And then all I need to do is cut into this glue. And if you ever have trouble getting glue off, you can heat it up, but it does generally come off okay.
And that should just fit into the bottom of your frame nicely. I wanted that side up because that's kind of the rougher side up. Although once the resin goes over the top of this, it will smooth out. But the shells have come out lovely, as you can see. They get a lovely iridescence on them when you use this technique. So let's have a look at the seaweed. Why did the octopus get upset? Because the seaweed. <laughs> I love dad jokes. I'm sorry. My son, if he watches this, he is going to go right mad. So you can just take up any of the bits that flashed on this, just with a little knife like so, just going round it. It is nicely cured. I tried to put some two-tone into this as well, which I think worked. Fish I really want to see. There we go. So we'll take those little bits of flashing out where I wasn't very careful. And I think that fish has come out lovely. And can you see what I mean by that little fin there? There's no air bubbles in that. And the same for that one. I think that's come out lovely too. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this now onto the base here, but make sure you do it around the right way the way you want it, because I nearly didn't. And all I'm gonna use before I do any pouring on this is I'm just going to use some good old super glue to stick this on with. Okay, so I'm just gonna slide it down to where I want push it on and hold it in place. And there we go, we got a nice flush finish to that bit now. So this is how I've decided to have it. And so what I will do is I will take a photograph of this first so that I know what I want to do before I put the first layer in and the first layer of the actual fish. I've got my resin all mixed up now and I'm not too worried if there's a few bubbles in it because after all it is underwater scene and there should be little bubbles where the fish do little <laughs> I'm not sure that's why there's bubbles. I've also put a little bit of translucent blue resin pigment in this as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour my first layer and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my photograph that I have to my left and I'm just going to put in my fish and don't forget if you waggle them about like this and get rid of the bubbles that are underneath it then they're less likely to move around and float to the top i mean they're not going to float to the top of this anyway because it's literally just coming to the top but it, it might do once i put on a little bit of a deeper layer leave that now to cure and once that's cured i can then put the second layer on fill it up and then remount it in its frame. So this is cured enough now for me to be able to put the remaining fish in. So I'm gonna have one there. One goes there. And it is cured, but it's still soft enough for me to push these into a little bit, which is good. They are now all in where I want them to be. And what I now need to do is put another layer of resin on the top of that and let that cure. I won't be putting any tint in this next layer, layer of resin. I will just be putting a clear layer on. This is finished now. I'm really pleased with how this has come out. And as you can see, it has got some depth to it. I love the way the sand has come out as well. And the little jellyfish and it's ever so easy to pop back into the frame. So there's the frame. You literally just have to turn this over, push it in, push your bit, little holders back down. We've got a nicely finished, easy to make diorama that would look good in any room. And also for extra stuff and extra tips and videos, Check out my Patreon site as well. The link is below. It really does help support everything that I do. And don't forget, check out the video coming up next. It's a must watch on how to paint mica powders into moulds. <laughs> Jolene, 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 Jolene. Oh, I do love a bit of country music.